We'll continue verifying in this video and again using some different strategies or some of the same strategies with more complicated problems. So this first one, example four, I'm going to rewrite again so that we have a little room to work with. The LCD is the product of one plus cosine x and sine x, so I'll multiply by the missing factor. I'll distribute the numerators and combine them into one and leave the denominators factored. So sine x times sine x gives us the sine x squared. The one plus cosine times itself gives us one plus two cosine x plus cosine squared x. Now addition is commutative and so I can see that I can combine the sine squared x with the cosine squared x and that's actually going to be equal to 1 using a Pythagorean identity. So sine squared x plus cosine squared x will be replaced with 1. When I add that to the one that's already there, I get 2 plus 2 cosine x over sine x times 1 plus cosine x. And if you remember in a prior video, I mentioned that you shouldn't distribute until after you see if you can cancel some common factors. And I, I can see that there's a common factor of 2 in the numerator that I can factor out. So I'm going to do that. So factoring out the 2, I get 2 times 1 plus cosine x over sine x times 1 plus cosine x. We can see that the cosine x is cancel. And I'm left with 2 over sine x and I'm not, I don't want to lose track of where I'm supposed to get to, right? I need to get to 2 cosecant x, and I'm almost there, because this 2 over sine x is really like saying 2 times 1 over sine x, and 1 over sine x is cosecant x, so we have verified this identity. I'll do one more example, and then have you do the last three practice problems. So. This one's a little tricky. It doesn't look super complicated. And really, deciding on which side to work with, it really doesn't matter. Um, but whatever one you choose to work with, the trick here is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of that binomial. So I'll work with the right-hand side, just because it seems that all the problems I've done so far have been the left, so for no other reason than that. So I'm going to, and I have a little room here, so I'm going to multiply the right hand side by 1 plus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. Now I'm not guaranteed that this is going to work for me, but multiplying by conjugates makes nice things happen sometimes. It sometimes helps you get to the point where you can make a trigonometric substitution, or like a Pythagorean substitution. So let's look at the right hand side here. When I multiply this, this is the difference, I'll get the difference of two squares. I'll get 1 minus cosine squared x all over sine x times 1 plus cosine x. I'm getting closer. 1 minus cosine squared x is actually equal to sine squared x from your Pythagorean identities keeping the left hand side in mind because this is what I need to get to, I'm almost there. I have sine squared x in the numerator and sine x in the denominator. This cancels one of each and so I'm left with sine x in the numerator and 1 plus cosine x in the denominator and I'm done. At this point, I'd like to pause the video and do the last practice problem and then start the video to check your work. Alright, on this one, we're going to use conjugates again, and it is your choice. You can work with the left side or the right side. And since I worked with the right hand side on the last one, I'll work with the left hand side on this one. So I'm going to rewrite the left hand side and then we'll multiply by the conjugate of the denominator this time. So it's 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x. In the numerator we get cosine x times 1 plus sine x. When we distribute or multiply out the 1 minus sine x times the 1 plus sine x we get the difference of two squares again. 
1 minus sine squared x. That's a Pythagorean uh, identity. The, um, so we know this is equal to cosine squared x. And we can cancel one the factor of cosine x in the numerator and one of the factors of cosine x in the denominator. And we're done. We get 1 plus sine x over cosine x. You could have just as easily worked with the right hand side and multiplied by the conjugate of the numerator, which would be 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x, and you would still be able to verify this identity.